Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness. Today, we're going to be talking about the conjunction of the Sun and Mars, which exacts on the 18th of November, 2023, marking a brand new two-year cycle of Mars, and therefore the development and activation and initiation of our masculine energy. We're going to discuss the previous cycle of Mars that we are wrapping up as I'm recording this video, as well as the next cycle of Mars very briefly, which begins on January 9th, 2026 in the sign of Capricorn. So lots of powerful stuff in this video. We are going to be pulling some cards as well. This particular Mars cycle, I am so excited about. We've been talking about it. It's linked into the 1111 portal and 1111 gateway as the sun and Mars came within two degrees of each other on 1111 and uh, really kind of began this energy. And the way that I'm feeling this particular Mars cycle is that over these next two years, until January 2026, we are essentially anchoring in that new new Earth timeline. We are anchoring in that ascension timeline for humanity. As we are experiencing another bifurcation, another splitting of the world, so to speak, as the 3D and the 5D realities become more distant from each other and these timelines become more pronounced. We have actually really we are anchoring and activating right now a brand new Ascension timeline, new and improved, one might say. And this Mars energy is an integral part of that process. So before we get too into that, I want to backtrack us a little bit so that we can talk about this previous Mars cycle that we are completing right now. That Mars cycle began on October 8th, 2021, when we had a conjunction of Mars and the Sun at 15 degrees of Libra, 15 being a Gemini degree, which is interesting because this conjunction was conjunct Mercury retrograde, who was at 17 degrees of Libra. So we had this meeting of the Sun and Mars with Mercury retrograde just a couple degrees away, really radiating its energy here. And we also had Chiron retrograde opposing at 10 degrees of Aries. And so, of course, this is a loose, uh, loose opposition here. But still, we're feeling that energy. It's five degrees away, right? So we're definitely still feeling the influence of Chiron here. And we know that we've been on a powerful journey with Chiron that really activated in a really significant way back in 2020 when we had that massive transit of Mars through the sign of Aries. Mars went retrograde in Aries. Mars spent almost six months in the sign of Aries at the end of 2020. And he did come into contact with Chiron a couple different times. So we've been working in earnest with earnest rather <laughs> with this Mars energy since then, going through all these different activations, and Chiron has been a part of this process, a part of this conversation. So it makes a lot of sense that this last Mars cycle that we are just now completing happened opposite Chiron. There were deep, deep wounds that were being brought to the surface that we were healing in terms of our empowerment. And we were experiencing this and seeing this playing out in the arena of our relationships with the energy of Libra present. It was our relationships and also our minds looking at that mercurial energy, looking at the fact that uh, the conjunction itself happened at a Gemini or a mercurial degree. So there's a couple different aspects here of what we've been working through with the past two years concerning our masculine energy. We've been working on setting boundaries. We've been working on understanding ourselves through the lens of our relationships and our interactions with others, the triggers that they bring up within us, the wounds that they bring up within us, the ways that we are able to speak our truth, remember Mercury, and stand our ground, and the ways that we are able to interact with another human being to really bring our energy together with another while still maintaining our own sovereignty and our own autonomy. And there have been a lot of challenges where that's concerned. We've also been really looking at that mind energy, that mental energy, and the ways that our minds can psych us out, right? The ways that we limit ourselves based on our own fears and limitations and all of the ego programming that exists within the mind. We've been We've been kind of defragging the computer of our minds, so to speak, uh, through many different lenses. This is only one of many, right? We, we talked about this a lot in 2021 when we had the North Node in Gemini and the South Node in Sagittarius, this energy of the belief systems in particular. And so 
there's been a really powerful process that we've been undergoing with all of that. And we may be feeling a climax of that energy as we are coming to the completion of that cycle. And by climax, I mean like some, some tests to test sort of where we're at, how far we've progressed with all of this. I'm definitely feeling for some people too, it's like the energy of like taking on other people's energies, taking responsibility for other people's energies. And this we can see also reflected to us in Saturn and Pisces right now. Saturn entered Pisces. Was it in March? I think it was March of this year that Saturn entered the sign of Pisces. I could be confusing that with uh, Pluto entering Aquarius. I know that happened on 32323. Uh, so am I getting those mixed up? I don't know. But Saturn entered Pisces, hit zero degrees of Pisces for the first time, sometime at the beginning of this year as well. And so we're working with some of those similar issues uh, as far as boundaries go, taking on what isn't ours, all of that stuff. Uh, energetic responsibility with Saturn and Pisces as well. I think some people watching this, if you haven't watched the Saturn and Pisces video, may want to go back and watch that because there's some relevant stuff in that video. So now we're moving into this brand new cycle again. And this cycle, I mean, we, we've been, Mars and the sun have been within two degrees of each other. So we've been feeling this already. The new moon in Scorpio really opened up this energy for us in some really powerful ways. This is why I was discussing 1111, the new moon in Scorpio. And this conjunction of Mars and the Sun together as one energy last week. But now we're really focusing more specific on this energy and how it's carrying through here for the next two years. So let me tell you guys some of the other alignments that we have going on with this. And yes, I am referring to my notes a little bit here as we're going just to make sure that I get this all correct for you guys. This conjunction is occurring at 25 degrees of Scorpio, which is an Aries degree, which is really perfect if we think about it, that this degree embodies Aries energy because Mars is the ruler of Aries. Mars is also the ruler of Scorpio or was the ruler of Scorpio before Pluto was discovered. Uh, Pluto definitely... Uh, <laughs> The heavyweight champ being that higher octave of Mars. Uh, now that now that Pluto has been brought into the mix, been brought into the collective awareness, there is no arguing that that is the true ruler of Scorpio. But this Mars, Mars energy is still at play as well. So if we think about, if we're looking with degree theory at 25 degrees being an Aryan degree, we can see that we hit both points here, both signs that Mars rules or has ruled, Aries and Scorpio. And that shows you the intensity of the energy that we're working with and the importance of this particular Mars cycle, which as I said, I feel moving us through and assisting us in anchoring in this new timeline for collective ascension and our individual ascension processes as well. This is an energy that is all about desire. It's all about activating that desire within us and having the courage to follow that desire wherever it takes us, to act upon our deepest desires. There are a couple really interesting aspects that we have going on here. When we have the day of this conjunction, let me find them here. I want to make sure I get all this right for you guys. It is conjunct Ceres, who is at 27 degrees of Scorpio. Isn't it interesting how the planet that's conjunct is always like a degree or two away? Two degrees for these last two, right? Uh, with the last one, we had Mercury two degrees away, still influencing the conjunction. Here we have Ceres two degrees away at 27 Scorpio, which interestingly enough is a Gemini degree. Uh, just bringing in that extra wave of healing, I feel like. And then we have an opposition to Uranus at 20 degrees of, of uh, Taurus. And 20 degrees is a scorpionic degree. So uh, we see these repeating energies and these repeating themes here, right? There is also a sextile going on with Pluto at 28 degrees of Capricorn, which is a Cancerian degree. And remember, Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. So the fact that Pluto is involved here is really potent and powerful as well. The fact that Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn is also especially relevant where the next cycle of Mars that begins in 2026 is going to be in the sign of Capricorn. That's where the conjunction is taking place. And that is, I believe, at 20 degrees of Capricorn. All right, so uh, nine, eight degrees away from where, where Pluto is right now during this current uh, cycle, this current conjunction. All right, so we got, we covered Pluto, 
there's something else going on too. There is a trine to Neptune retrograde at 24 degrees of Pisces and 24 is a Piscean degree. So we got that, that double oomph of the Pisces energy here. And so when we see Neptune and Pluto here, we see these energies of the soul. These are different aspects that represent the soul's energy. And it was 1133 for the time when I said that. So we know that that's important. We know that that's profound. All right. So this is really bringing in that energy of the higher self. Where we are anchoring in these higher timelines, right? We talked about the timelines for ascension for humanity, for our individual selves, and really bringing into, really merging on a deeper level, as we always talk about, because we've been in this process of doing it, you guys, uh, with our higher selves, right? Bridging timelines together, aspects, pieces of our higher selves, collecting all of those aspects of us, merging them into oneness, into union, um, just really powerful activations of the higher self and alignment with that highest timeline for our evolution so i love that i love that we have this uh these plutonic and these neptunian influences here and the influence of uranus as well which represents the higher mind right uranus being the higher octave of mercury and my right ear just started ringing when i started talking about uranus so uranus is very significant here uranus is bringing in the downloads uranus is bringing in the information uranus is really providing the activation and the upgrade that we are receiving here pluto and neptune as well absolutely but uranus very very much so, and Uranus is really setting the tone for us in a lot of ways, because this energy, like we said, it's about embracing our, treep, our deepest and truest desires, all right, and not being afraid to do that. Neptune is letting us, or uh, Uranus rather, is letting us know the importance of our authenticity, the importance of being who we are, of expressing our own unique spark, really embracing what makes us unique, what makes us special, and allowing that to let us stand out and not being afraid of that, not being afraid of the truth of who we are and not being afraid of showing that to the world. With this scorpionic energy, we're working with plutonic energy. We're working, working with eighth house energy. We're working with that energy of what is taboo, right? I want to say that true black moon Lilith was involved in this somehow as well. I would check out my natal chart again, but unfortunately, as you guys know, uh, I'm still recording things on my phone right now, which is where all my apps are, so I can't look it up. But I feel as though there was, and it could have been with the new moon in Scorpio, perhaps, that we had the activation of true, true, wow, true black moon Lilith. Uh, but it's, it's that energy, it's that vibe, right? It's about embracing the shadow, embracing our darkness, Right, understanding that we are we are darkness and light. And we are meant to love and embrace all aspects of who we are. We came here to be all aspects of who we are. We came here to experience the sacred and the profane. And so Scorpio energy is all about embracing those aspects of the self that society perhaps thinks are are not not quite acceptable, right? All the things that make us that we've been told we should be shameful of, right? That we've hidden in the darkness, that we've kept a secret. It's like, it's very much the energy of bringing the secrets to light. And we're going to see this happening on a collective scale as well as more and more truth continues to come out. And more and more people begin to embrace, embrace themselves on a deeper and more profound level but also begin to, it's like I f I'm feeling it as people collectively over the next two years, even though with that Uranian energy there, it tells us that there are going to be shocks, there are going to be tower moments, right? But through this process over the next two years, which may be very tumultuous, the less aligned you are with your higher self, the more difficult this is going to be. Those people who are not on the Ascension timeline, who are on the lower timelines are going to have a real hard time with this energy. All right. We're going to see a lot of chaos ensuing. 
All right, what we see in the news, we see the narratives, we see what's going on in different parts of the world right now. Uh, it, it That energy, you you guys know YouTube is a funny place, uh, which is why I'm preparing to get much more active on Rumble coming up here, where we can speak about the big W, the big three letter word that begins with a W, right? We can speak about that. And uh, the likelihood that, that some of those timelines may come to pass, or they may not. I mean, we're shifting into higher and higher timelines all the time. So we could quite literally derail those timelines as we have seen ourselves do. But um, I'm feeling right now that what it really depends on, because remember, everything that's going on outside is a reflection of what's happening within. And so if the majority of the people continue to be at war with themselves, we could see that reflected in the outer reality. But just know that if you are aligned to the higher timeline and that is happening, it's not, go it's like, and you guys have seen this. You've already seen this energy come to pass in the way that this works, right? You saw it in 2020 with the pandemic, right? You saw the way that people, it was like they were living in two completely different realities, depending on how they perceived that situation and how they acted accordingly. 2020 for me was the most freeing year of my life. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, the experiences that I had, the ways that I was able to um, just really blossom. And I essentially lived my life, like I just went on living my life more or less the way that I had before. You know what I mean? I spent a lot more time out in nature, which was really beautiful. I got to connect with that aspect of myself and find really my sanctuary, which is out in nature. I didn't really know that about myself before then. So that was a beautiful thing, right? But it's like, it literally felt like living in two totally different worlds. All of that was going on, but it wasn't a part of my daily life. And that's what it's going to continue to feel like. So those lower timelines may play out, but we're going to be in a sense kind of detached from that energy. And it's not going to be directly and negatively impacting us. I think that's all we need to say about that. Um, but it, it's that beautiful energy of developing a deeper level of self-love. Right? Through this embracing of all the aspects of who we are, healing a lot of shame. There's a lot of sexual healing that's going on for us over these next two years. We talked about that with the new moon in Scorpio or was it a different moon or something? I can't remember. It's It all starts blending together, right? Uh, but we had, we had this powerful clearing of uh, sexual energy very recently in some of these lower timelines uh, concerning sex trafficking and different things like that and uh, the returning and the, the merging of aspects of the soul like trapped and splintered aspects of people's souls relating to that energy and really reclaiming we're in this process of reclaiming our sexual energy which remember is our creative energy this is one of the most powerful fuels that the archons the cabal whatever you want to you want to call them that they use, they they feed off of our sexual creative energy, especially when they're able to invert it and use it against us by by making it something dark, by make, making it something taboo, by adding shame and all of these lower emotions to it. So we're we're clearing those we're clearing those timelines, we're clearing those templates, and we're taking and reclaiming that energy. So there's going to be a huge, huge, massive healing around our sexual energy and the ways that we utilize that and really moving into a more sacred expression and understanding of that energy and also the ways that we that we can employ that creatively because remember like we said it, it our sexual energy is our creative energy so that's a huge aspect of this as well it's just it's so exciting everything that's going on with this it's really us calling back our power in every single way, shape, and form, taking our power back. All right. And if you guys want to really jump into this energy, reach out to me. I am taking a little bit of a break for the end of the year, but once we move into 2024, I'm definitely going to be doing aura sessions with people again. 
And so I highly encourage people if that is something that you're interested in. An entity removal session, the Raw Reiki is a fantastic place to start. That is a, a really powerful session in and of itself. Highly recommend it. But if you really want to go full bore with this, uh, book an Aura Hypnosis Healing Session. They are so powerful. The Quantum Healing, it also involves entity removal. And it's like there's no better way to call your power back than to do that. All right, but we can do this in a million different ways simply by making those statements, right? Remember also daily stating what we consent to and what we do not consent to. I do not consent to any type of infringement upon any aspect of my being in this or any other time, space, dimension, or multidimensional reality. All right. And we call our power back at night. We set that intention to draw all of our energy that we've leaked out throughout the day to cleanse it, clear it, and draw it back to us, call it back to us, imagining it's like a reverse starburst coming back toward us. All right. We do meditations where we retrieve aspects of our soul from different timelines, from different existences. All right. There are so many different ways to work with this energy and the ways that we move in our daily lives are the most powerful indicators of this as well. Okay, like there's, we take our power back, we can make these statements and do these things, do these meditations, right? And this is very important, but at, we can shield our energy. Also very important to be shielding, set your love light bubble, set your personal Merkaba, whatever else you feel like doing. We teach some very involved shielding practices when you receive a raw Reiki or an aura session. Um, but just those basics, so important, right? To be doing this. But we also take our power back through our daily actions, through the way we allow other people to treat us, through the choices that we make, through what we consent to, through what we consume on a mind level, on a physical level, on a soul level. All right. So pay attention to that. Do everything with intention whenever and wherever possible be very intentional with everything that you speak everything that you think everything that you do all right you guys let's pull some cards on this i think right oh yeah before we do i do want to mention real quick the next cycle that we have of mars when mars comes into conjunction with the sun again on january 9th 2026 at 19 degrees of capricorn and during this uh conjunction Venus will be at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And so 19 degrees is a Sagittarian degree. Checking in my mind, double checking. Yes, I believe is a Sagittarian degree. But Venus will be at a Capricornian degree of 20 degrees, shedding her energy and her light. And there will be an opposition to Jupiter at 20 degrees of Cancer. So we have that Jupiter energy coming in, expanding, right? And then we have the Venus energy. So we have our masculine and our feminine energies merging together, right? Our feminine energy coming in to activate our, our masculine energy to a higher degree. That's going to be some really interesting stuff, right? In the sign of Capricorn, which is the master earth sign being the final earth sign of the zodiac all right this is about ambition this is about achievement this is about anchoring things in physically into the real world right really anchoring that timeline down we are building that timeline we are creating that timeline with this next mars cycle and then we're really acting i'm feeling it like we're anchoring it with this current mars cycle and then it's like blossoming like a lotus flower when we move into that next cycle in 2026. All right, so let's get some cards out here. And interestingly enough, I'm wanting to pull, and I guess it makes sense since we're dealing with Scorpio energy, I'm wanting to pull from the Wisdom of the House of Night deck. So we're gonna pull some energy here for this Mars cycle. Clear. This next two year cycle of Mars. What do we need to know? Okay. 
tell me what we need to know and understand about this next Mars cycle. First card out, card number 23. And of course, this cycle begins in 2023, right? Which And this also breaks down to a five. We have listening. Ooh, there's a quote on this card. And it says, darkness does not always equate to evil. Light does not always bring good. Darkness does not always equate to evil. Light does not always bring good. And we know this. We talked about in a previous video, video the importance of uh, not separating love, love and light when we speak. How light does not necessarily denote love. And so we, we keep those words joined together. Love, light, as opposed to love and light. All right. We want to be careful. We don't want to just be, uh, be assuming that anything that is of the light is positive right? So when you are specifying, say that you are um, connecting with beings or energies, you don't want to just say of the light, all right? You want to say of benevolence. Benevolence should be the key word that you are using when you are discerning and when you are setting boundaries as to what entities and beings you are willing to speak with or work with on any level energetically or in any, any type of way, right? Light, there's all kinds of light in the universe, okay? And so this is once again where we're seeing that not everything is what it seems, okay? Remember, there is beautiful organic darkness. All right, darkness is where creational energy lives. The womb is dark, right? The void is dark where all possibilities exist, and then we bring that darkness into form. We bring it into light when we create. All right, so there's all kinds of darkness. Not all of it is bad. Your own darkness is sometimes the key to your greatest transformation, your greatest healing. And that's what Scorpio energy teaches us. All right. So it's once again, embracing all the aspects, all the sides of you and also noticing what's going on in the world and noticing what's being presented and what's being misrepresented. I really loved when uh, Rising Phoenix Aurora uh, described this as the inverted matrix because I always used to say, and I still do, I used to call this the upside down world. And what I mean by that is that many things, most things are the complete opposite of what they appear at face value. That's why you have to be able to look deeper. You have to be able to understand on a deeper level to see through what's presented, to see through the facade. And that's what many of us are going to be doing through this next cycle. We're going to be learning how to see through the fa facade, through our own facade that we put up to the world, through other people's facades that they, uh, they put out to us, and through the greater facades of this inverted matrix in general. Right? This is how we anchor in those higher timelines for humanity. By recognizing the false, as soon as we recognize the false, we dismantle its power. Remember, the reason that the Archons are able to feed off of our energy is because we are oblivious to them, right? Because they control the perspective of the masses. They control the creational power of the masses. As one by one, we unplug from that energy and we see through the illusion they lose their power source one by one by one when we revoke our consent, right? Because we can consent by default. That's why we have to be so intentional with what we do. We revoke our consent. We unplug ourselves from that energy and they lose battery source after battery source after battery source. All right. So this energy is so big, so important. And we're going to talk about some of these illusions and some of these energies uh, when we start streaming on Rumble. I know I, I know I... This year, the end of this year, there's a lot of personal stuff for me that I'm that I'm going through. A lot of big changes, a lot going on. So I uh, trust and believe that these things are coming. I know sometimes I say things and they don't happen for a while, but they are coming. All right, you guys. Okay, so yeah, big big energies here. And honestly, I just received notice that I need to go. 
So I will be back and I'll do the rest of this reading for you guys. I'll, I'll put out another video with the rest of this reading. But I think this card sums up these energies really well. So I'm really glad that we at least got this card uh, working with us for this portion of the Mars Sun conjunction. We're in these energies for the next two years, so we got plenty of time to uh, pull some more cards on it. I love you, honor you, and respect you. You are so beautiful. You are so powerful. Do not forget it. Own it. All right, and uh, if you want to set up a session with me in the future. I am still booking for, I have a limited number of spaces left for the, the end of the year. So reach out to me if you want, are drawn to do any personal one-on-one -on -one work with me and I will be uh, picking up. There's going to be a lot of really exciting stuff happening that I can't wait to announce to you guys uh, soon for 2024. But um, yeah, for right now, reach out if you feel guided to, if you feel guided to donate, there are buttons to do so. There are also links in my profile, but just know that every like, every share, every subscribe, and please do those things if you haven't yet, are as good as a donation. Talk to you soon.